Hey, what's going on, phone dogs? Bo HD here. Hope you guys are doing well. So, in early March, Google released the developer preview of Android P, offering a glimpse at some of the new features coming to the next version of Android. We decided to hold off on the coverage of the developer preview until Google released their public beta, just because the public beta is more stable and it has more features, and many of you guys will be able to download and install the next version of Android on your device. There is a list of smartphones that support the beta this time around. It's not just Pixel smartphones anymore. I'll place a link down below in the description to enroll your device and download the beta if that's what you want to do. But what we're gonna be doing in this video is discussing some of those features that are found in Android P. We have tallied up uh, over 20 different features and or aesthetic changes made to Android P. So sit back, relax, and let's talk Android. Do keep in mind that some of these might change or be tweaked between now and when Android P officially launches. So just keep that in mind. So we'll start to see changes even when the phone is in sleep mode. You'll see that at the very bottom on the always on display, there's a battery indicator that gives you the percentage of battery life remaining. If you double tap on the screen or power it on the old fashioned way, we'll also see a more compact layout for the date and time. It's very subtle, but I think it's worth mentioning. The overall aesthetic theme in Android P consists of rounded corners and round icons. We'll see the app icons are round and the Google search widget features rounded corners. Swiping down the notification drawer will reveal all new round icons for your quick settings. Notifications have rounded corners too. You can long press a notification to get to the settings. There's also a manage notification button at the bottom that will list your most recent notifications to uh, turn them on or off as you see fit. Oh, and furthermore, there's a blue and white look to the quick settings, which is new. And you might have noticed there's no home button anymore. You can go to the gestures section in the settings to enable these new gesture controls or just reinstate the classic navigation buttons if you want. What we have here is navigation similar to that of the iPhone X or iPhone 10. You swipe up to reveal the overview screen where all your apps are listed horizontally instead of vertically. They're also live, so you can copy and paste text, for example, without ever completely opening up an app. A second swipe will open up the app drawer and it lists the apps that it thinks you're going to use at the top here. What's cool is that you can slide the little button where your home button would be to scroll through your background applications. It's a, a quick way to switch between apps. All you have to do is tap on this home button to go back to the home screen once you are in an application. And the back button is there as well. So don't feel like they removed the back button because they didn't. The volume controls have been completely redesigned. You now have this vertical slider when you press on the volume controls on the side. It's right next to the physical volume control buttons and it's super minimal. You can tap on the screen to close the menu or just let it fade away after a few seconds. You'll also see a button up top that will let you switch between ringer modes, vibrate, silent, or ringer on. We also have a settings icon below the slider that will open up your sound settings where you can change the media, alarm, and ring volumes as well as several other features. The settings drawer has been updated as it seems to be with every new version of Android. Right off the bat, you'll notice colorful new round icons. Up top is a huge search bar with rounded corners. Um, I use the search bar a lot, so I'm really glad it's still here and it's bigger and better than ever. There have been improvements made to the rotation lock. If you have the rotation lock on, meaning your phone won't reorient itself into landscape mode, and you rotate your phone anyway, a button will pop up next to your navigation buttons to let you rotate the screen for one time only. You can now edit screenshots as soon as they are captured. Once you take a screenshot, you can pull down the notification panel and tap on edit and start marking up your screenshot. Battery saver mode can now be toggled on automatically at any battery percentage between five and 70%. Uh, you can use this handy dandy little slider here to select when you'd like the feature to be turned on. There's a new zoom lens when highlighting text. If you're writing up a text message, you can highlight a word or two and tap and hold on the blue marker to see a zoomed in view of whatever it is that you typed on to more precisely select text. Now let's talk about some of the background features or the features that are kind of hard to show you on camera here. Um, one neat background feature is that the background apps will no longer access the microphone, camera, or other sensors of your smartphone. So that, that feature should really appeal to privacy advocates or just paranoid Android users. Google is also bringing a digital well-being dashboard to help you keep track of how much time you spend on your mobile phone to, uh, to basically help you limit your time on the device. I don't know if, uh, if you're like me, but 
I spend way too much time looking at my phone before bed and looking at my phone when I wake up. Sometimes it's, it's well over an hour. I'll just sit and stare at my phone, mindlessly looking at content. You will even be able to turn your phone into a grayscale mode to dull content and make you put your phone down sooner. There's a new do not disturb mode that will not only block unwanted sounds, but it can block visuals as well. So when you turn this mode on, you'll see all of your notifications disappear from the notification panel and the lock screen as well. There are actions and slices, which are deep links into apps that are able to be surfaced in other parts of the operating system. Uh, for example, you can search for Lyft and see search results as well as a button to call a Lyft directly to go home and developers can program these actions for their apps. So there are a ton of new features available in Android P. What we do not know yet is what Android P will be called, though rumors do suggest that it will be called Peppermint, which I like. I think that's a pretty good name. Let me know what you think it should be called in the comment down below. Um, there are some features, of course, that we weren't able to show you in this video, but hopefully you did enjoy the features that did make the cut. Also, let us know which feature you are most excited for in a comment down below. And remember, if you have a Pixel or one of the nine smartphones on the list down below in the description, you can go ahead and download the public beta for yourself and test out some of these features. Uh, just keep in mind that it is a beta and you're likely going to run into some bugs or performance issues. With that said, I'm BoHD from PhoneDog.com. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you right back here in the next one. See ya.